live it says okay we're live <laughs> hello everyone oh my goodness we're so excited that you're here um thank you for joining us um welcome to our healthy living firesider event um if you're watching on facebook um or if you're here with us on zoom i know we have a couple people here um comment below um or comment in the zoom box you know just let us know where you're watching from um we'd love to hear from you um we will be uh we will be watching and get, you know, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can definitely put them in the comments, Zoom, you know, wherever you're watching from. Um, we're gonna be watching both Facebook too. And um, so if you have questions, we can answer those at the end. Um, if you guys could just, you know, stay muted, um, you know, for the most part until the end, that would be great. Um, so for those of us that put these events together, we are a part of a healthy living revolution community. We are focused on helping people take their health back, focusing on lifestyle and nutrition habits that promote good health. Um, my name is Jessie Lepicki. I'm a nutrition coach and I'm a plant-based athlete. Um, and I have been a part of this community now for going on three years. And what that journey looked like for me, you know, I was struggling in my 20s, you know, I was overweight, I had very painful and severe acne. I was diagnosed with uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, if you're familiar with it. Um, I, so I learned about, you know, how I could improve my health with, with a more whole food, you know, plant-based diet. And then, you know, I started to make those changes and I saw so many incredible improvements. You guys, I lost weight, my skin cleared up, and I actually found out years later that I was able to reverse my PCOS. Um, so needless to say, you know, I was a true believer when it came to the power of plants. And this is kind of how we all came to this place here. But, you know, then, you know, I met my husband years later, um, became an OCR athlete, obstacle course racing athlete. Um, and, you know, we really, we, we thought we were healthy, we were super healthy. We were counting calories. We were doing portion controlling and our, with our meals and, you know, exercising was our lifestyle, right? We thought we were healthy. Um, but, you know, we did notice that we were always, always getting sick. Uh, we had a lot of inflammation, apparently. Um, my husband would get, you know, sinus infections all the time. And I remember the winter of 2018, I had four colds back to back to back. You guys, I'll never forget it. And I just couldn't shake it. Um, we really thought we were healthy. Like I said, you know, we were exercising, eating really well, um, but that obviously there was something missing for us. Um, we were just really frustrated and felt lost, you know, so we were looking for ways to better our health. Um, the beautiful part about when you meet people in your life that share things with you, that's really what happened to us. Um, at the time when we needed it most, I learned about an amazing way to flood our bodies with some incredible nutrition. And that allowed me to jet set us into, you know, whole, a whole different form of functioning, to be honest with you. We have just experienced so much less sickness um, and inflammation. It's like night and day in our life right now. It really is. I mean, knock on wood, I have, we have not had a single illness uh, in our household since that winter of 2018. And we are so thankful. Um, it's really been just an amazing arena to live and kind of, you know, live a life of being sick and unwell to having a lot of hope and health, which is fantastic, which, you know, it's been able, you know, we've been able to learn so much from this community um, along this journey and just knowing what it's done for our family, you know, how can I not pay it forward? So that's why we're here today. Um, you know, we are here, you know, that's my mission and goal in life is to pay health forward and to help other people learn how to do that as well. Um, so Cassie, did you want to share your story? Sure. I'll share it real quick. <laughs> hey everyone. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Cassie. I'm a runner. I'm a health coach and I'm a mom of three. Um, when I was pregnant, actually with my second child, I started having some issues with, um, swallowing, um, you know, and it made life kind of difficult, but I ignored it, thought it was part of the pregnancy. Um, and then I finally got checked out by the doctors and that's when they diagnosed me with an autoimmune disease that there's actually no cure for. So, you know, of course it stressed me out a little. I was worried not only what this would mean for, you know, my future health, but also my family's health. You know, how am I gonna take care of them if I'm going through this? So my kids about a year ago, they weren't really eating so many, you know, fruits and vegetables. I felt like I was fighting with them constantly just to, you know, get them to eat them, you know, and explain the importance of eating a balanced diet. So actually when my, um, Jessica and my mom, um, I think they, they shared some info with me on these plant concentrates and the complete shakes, which our family loves so much. Um, then I saw the research, the fact that I could get it, you know, for my kids for free. So, you know, of course I'm like, well, sure, sure, sign me up. 
Um, and then, you know, it, I just, it was something that we were looking for. We needed it. Um, you know, as a health coach, I know how important it is to be mindful of what we're eating and, you know, putting in our bodies. But, you know, if I can't get my kids to put something healthy in their bodies, what am I supposed to do? So I knew this would just be an easy button for us um, to get more plant nutrition in for them, but also helpfully help me, you know, to with some of my health issues and get on the road to healing and recovery. So, you know, we made simple changes. We added whole food concentrates. And just by making these healthier choices, I've actually been able to get off the medicine I was on for about a year now. So that's really exciting. You know, and then we also, you know, we just started adopting a more plant-based lifestyle too. Um, you know, and the best part is too, I joined this incredible community of people, you know, who support each other and really want to help, you know, see each other grow. Um, and I love that I'm able to make a living doing something that I'm very passionate about. Um, and, it, you know, it's also a blessing for our family too, because we have extra finances, you know, I'm able to pay for our, and, and, you know, an extra car for the house, you know, I'm able to not stand in the grocery line wondering if I have enough money in my account. Um, so, you know, it's definitely helped us bridge those financial gaps. That we were dealing with prior to this and you know i don't have to miss my kids activities anymore their sports any events that they have i get to be there for all of that now so thank you for letting me share my story with you oh my gosh cassie i love you i love your story um <laughs> thank, thank you. you so much for sharing um so i had learned a little bit about fire cider vinegar you guys last year um another person in the community she was she's actually a nurse miss maureen i'm gonna call her out mo she's in the group <laughs> Um, she actually taught us, a group of us, um, how to make it. Um, it's great for immune health. It's great for gut health. Um, it's a fermentation and we call it the cold and flu ninja tonic. <laughs> and when you ferment, you ferment bacteria into that. And that is what is good for your gut health. Um, I actually think I, I have a video here um, that can actually give you a better explanation of what it means um, to flood your body with so much plant nutrition. It's a two minute video. So bear with me, I'm gonna pull it up here for you. Oh, that's not what I wanted to share. Where did it go? Did I lose it? Here it is. Okay. The fact that we actually grow a lot of these products very close to the factory and we can preserve the freshness, they can be harvested and processed within just a couple hours of when they come out of the field, as opposed to maybe some of the produce you might buy in the store where it has to go through uh, trucking and shipping and a lot of different steps to be available to you. These processes that we do are done just within a few hours of when the product's harvested. From the farm through our plant, the fresh product actually only takes about six hours. When the product arrives at our farm processing plant, the product is tumbled, washed, and cleaned. The clean product is then laid out over the processing belt and slowly moved through sub-zero air. When we're doing that, we're able to freeze the product and preserve all the freshness of the product just as if it was from the field. The sooner you can lower the temperature and control the temperature, the more you can lock in the nutrients. When Juice Plus is looking for nutritional quality, color is very important. Most people associate a dark red cranberry as a sign of the ripeness of that fruit. Freshness is very important. There's a very short amount of time from when they're harvested to when they're frozen, locking in the freshness and nutrients. While we're producing the Juice Plus powders, they have very high standards for the purity of their powders, what can go into their powders. They also have tight controls over their supply lines. They know which farms it comes from, and they have a good control over that. Also, when the products are produced, they have certain steps throughout the process for safety and purity. My favorite part of working with Juice Plus is knowing that people are benefiting from what we're doing. We put a lot of work into how we grow our ingredients and how we process them so that they're safe and high quality and nutritious. It's neat to see the results of that by seeing the customers that use them and seeing their lives improved from some of the healthy ingredients and produce that we process. a great video i love that video <laughs> so you get it you know i'm so glad you got to, you got to see you know a little sneak peek of um you know really what 
getting all of that nutrition is about um, in your body, which is amazing. Um, so we are going to jump in to fire cider. We're going to start this fire cider party. <laughs> um, we've got some amazing ingredients that we're going to talk with you about today, you guys. Um, so um, garlic our head of garlic here is a whole bulb and i just wanted to point out too because um you know i didn't even know the difference between the bulb and the clove uh, until i joined this community so just in case anyone's curious this is the whole bulb all together and then the cloves are the little ones um inside and i just wanted to show you guys that um so we did split it up um the ingredients because you know we just we don't want to throw all the ingredients in the mason jar we really want to teach you guys a little bit about the ingredients um too so that you know a little bit more about them and so hopefully you have all the ingredients um cut up already because we want to respect your time um so okay we are going to start with horseradish all right so you can get horseradish um, root if you're familiar with that. I couldn't find it. My husband tried, um, but I have seen it before. I know Cassie found it at her Whole Foods last time we made it at her house. Um, I have today um, just the jar of horseradish, which is totally fine to use. That's what I'm going to be using today. So, um, and we have some ideas for the solids um, at the end here for you too. We're going to tell you about that. So. All right, horseradish, oh my gosh, you guys, it blew, it was, it blew my mind uh, to hear about this. There's obviously a handful in, of ingredients in fire cider, but after researching horseradish, I was like, wow, I literally had no idea. So um, number one, you know, it helps you combat cancer. I'm gonna attempt to pronounce some of these names, but if I ruin them, you know, don't be mad at me. But um, the glucilates, in horseradish are what's found to activate those cancer fighting enzymes. And this can prove to be beneficial to patients fighting all types of cancers. Um, it's also got a lot of antioxidant, it's an antioxidant powerhouse, you guys. We were able to, um, uh, so the horseradish fruit, it possesses several phyto compounds, um, types of phytonutrients that are extremely beneficial to your human health. Um, things like anti-mugenic, mutagenic, um, which means they can protect the body from mutagens that, you know, otherwise inflict grave harm. It also increases DNA damage caused by oxidative stress, um, exactly what fruits and vegetables do as well. I love that. Um, and it can also treat urinary tract infections, which I had no idea. The um, antibiotic properties can help uh, urinary tract infections in some cases um, better than conventional treatment. So, um, and then number four, um, another reason why horseradish works really well in this aspect is called um, Cinegreen, if I'm saying that right. It's basically another powerhouse nutrient that helps with respiratory disorders and sinus infections, things like that. Um, it also enhances digestion, fights inflammation, eases respiratory ailments. Um, it also has antimicrobial my properties. Um, this is a really big deal as I'm learning about, you know, different types of mold in our gut and that, you know, they can really be trapped in that in your gut as well, which is, is really interesting to me. I didn't know. Um, but here's a fun one. It can also replace aging spots, you guys. Um, even, you know, this information has, you know, you can, there's information online that you can Google and you can turn it, you turn, bleh, turn your horseradish into a paste to put on your face. You leave it on for 20 minutes and apparently it's unbelievable. So I'm planning to try that. <laughs> and then uh, number seven, you know, it can boost your hair growth. It can treat uh, melasma, which is a condition where brown patches appear on your face and since horseradish has bleaching properties, you know, it can really help treat discoloration, which is the primary symptom of melasma. So um, if you have horseradish, you know, go ahead and add it to your mason jar. Um, if you're, if you're using the root, you know, I usually grate it up a little bit or just chop it into pieces for this. I'm using a spoon um, and I'm just going to put it right into my jar. And, and it says use a heaping spoon, a, a tablespoon. So I'm probably going to put two of these in here. Um, I imagine the more you put in, I mean, obviously you can't go wrong with this, you guys. Uh, the more you put in, uh, it, it, I'm sure it would be fine. It's just, it might be a little spicy, right? Um, so, okay, let's see. 
and it doesn't, yeah, here I have notes here, sorry. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, you know, how you cut it up if you have it graded. Um, so you definitely wanna make sure like this, you know, we're gonna talk about this too, but if you already have your, your ginger peeled and your garlic, you know, things like that, your onion, um, you wanna let those sit for about 10 minutes because it'll, it, we'll talk about that in a second. It'll actually allow uh, some of the really help, uh, great health benefits to come out and, and be activated, so. Um, okay, now the only thing that does matter, you know, obviously you want to take off the peel from your onion, um, you peel off the hard layers, um, and you want to cut off all the hard layers of your ginger, um, in case you were wondering. So, um, you, anything else though, peel and all, it goes in seeds and all from the lemon, uh, oranges, all of it. So, um, okay. Yeah. And I think Cassie, do you have one that you wanted to talk about oranges? Yeah, I, guess, I think the next thing we're going to talk about is oranges. So if you have your oranges cut up, um, you can actually go ahead and put them in your mason jars. Um, you know, oranges are really help, great with helping to protect your eyes, improving your vision, um, also like macular degeneration and cataracts, um, blindness due to vision deterioration. So it's good for that. Enhances sexual performance, which I didn't know. <laughs> and it, uh, you know, it's a mild aphrodisiac properties. Um, prevents constipation due to, you know, it's high water content. And, you know, it also has a high fiber content as well. So you're bolstering, you know, the immune system. It helps reduce oxidative stress, which we all know causes aging. Um, and it also, um, what does it do? It also helps in the, in the immune system because it has vitamin C in it as well. So you're also, you know, we're putting in the peel of the orange, which has a lot of great properties. Um, I know not many people really eat the peel of the orange. I mean, I don't know about you. Do, do you, Jess? I don't <laughs> no, know. I know it's in the class, right? <laughs> um, all right. So it, it also helps with your mood. It also, um, you know, it can reduce depression, calm your anxiety um, through the flavonoids, and it can improve your serotonin synthesis. Um, it's used for stress to, you know, it helps reduce the cortisol levels, which I didn't know about that either. Um, you know, it can help prevent cancer cells, you know, from growing. It helps with digestion. Um, protects your heart, healthy hair, healthy heart, um, and even helps with asthma. Um, you know, so we'll leave these links on here for you guys later. Um, we'll give you, you know, any information that you're going to need. Um, but I think that's all I have for orange for now. Jess, yeah. you want to share about lemons? Absolutely. So uh, if you have your lemon, I went ahead and put mine in um, right up, right in there. And you can, you know, you don't have to really squeeze anything. I just chop mine up. Um, you know, I did, I did. Oh, by the way, this is what my fire. I did a fire cider right before the, the event tonight, just to show you guys what it looks like. Unfortunately, I don't have one from three to four weeks ago that we can try together, but um, Do we peel our lemon. Do we peel our lemon or no? No, you leave the skin on. Yes. Um, because just like the orange, um, the lemon has some great properties in the peel as well. Um, and all of it will just ferment. Yeah, it'll be good. And seeds and all. Yeah. Throw it all in. Um, okay, so lemon is high in vitamin C, fiber, and it has a various um, it has various beneficial plant compounds. It supports heart health, um, and there you go, heart health again, right, Cass? You know, fifty one percent of the recommended daily intake is in the lemon. Actually, um, that helps prevent heart issues and strokes. Um, the plant compounds are you know that are found in lemons, uh, mainly hesperida and diosmin, if I'm saying that right, um, have also been found to lower cholesterol. Um, it helps control weight, helps prevent kidney stones by increasing the urine production and increasing urine pH. Um, so literally just half a cup, four ounces per day of lemon juice can provide enough citric acid to help you prevent kidney stones uh, from forming in people who, who have already had them. So I had no idea. That was super um, interesting to me because I, I know several people that have kidney stones. So um, it helps protect against anemia uh, because lemon contains some iron, um, but they primarily prevent anemia by improving your absorption of iron from plant foods. So I don't know if anybody knew that, but you know, we really should be putting lemon juice on all of our salads, right? Um, but it helps to reduce cancer risk, helps to improve digestion. Um, so yeah, go ahead and throw that right into your mason jar. Uh, like I said, seeds and all, there's healthy oils as well in those in the seeds too. So, um, and then Cassie, you wanna share? All right, so the next thing we're gonna add is ginger. Um, and ginger actually contains ginger all. I've never heard that before, but <laughs> so you just want to grab your ginger, cut it up. Um, you know, you could do little pieces like this. I don't know if you can see that. 
um, or you can grade it if you want. Um, you know, you're just using the entire root. If you want less or more, it's completely up to you. It doesn't matter. Um, but it actually contains powerful medicinal properties. It aids in digestion. It helps with uh, nausea. I, I remember when we were on our honeymoon, we actually, when we were doing this one drive, they told, someone gave us like ginger candy or something that had ginger in it that was supposed to help with that. Um, you know, it helps with morning sickness. Oh, Cassie, I think you muted yourself. I don't know what happened. I must have pressed on it and not realize. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, did you guys hear the part about it helps with morning sickness and all that or no? Oh yeah, go ahead, say it again. I think we missed it. Okay, no, so it, um, ginger helps aids with digestion. Um, it reduces nausea, helps with morning sickness. Um, it also you know, has powerful anti-inflammatory properties, um, antioxidant effects. It helps reduce body mass index, which is pretty awesome. Um, it helps with your blood insulin levels, which helps with type two diabetes and insulin resistance. Um, and now there's actually a warning with ginger, although it's considered safe to take it with, um, with your doctor before consuming large amounts or if you're pregnant. So imagine this because, you know, the properties really help you relax and promote contractions. So you'd want to research more if you are pregnant, you know, just to be careful. Um, and I think, Jessica, do you have garlic you wanted to talk about? Some of the benefits of that? Oh my gosh, garlic. Everybody knows how healthy garlic is. We know this already. It's no surprise. Um, so like I was saying, you're going to put the entire bulb in you guys. So I've already done mine. I've chopped mine up. Mine looks like this. It's not really grated. It's just, you know, a little bit bigger than grated, I guess. So you still want to chop it up. It, you know, I've heard some people put the whole clove in and just smash the clove. That's okay too. If you want to do that, um, just know if you're not chopping it, you're not going to get some of those health properties to activate, which, um, I'm going to tell you about here in a second. So. Um, it's a, it's actually a property called Allison that, um, that activates it's a, it's actually a relative of the onion. So same with onions. If we chop our onion, if we chop our garlic and leave it, you know, we let it sit for 10 minutes first, that is a really, um, a great way to add more, more health benefits to your diet because you're allowing, um, something called Allison to activate. Um, so, okay. Um, let's see our health benefits oh my gosh there's so many <laughs> um so like i said it's a part of the onion family it's massively nutrition nutri nutrient dense you guys as far as you know vitamins and minerals it has magnesium vitamin b6 vitamin c selenium it also has sulfur compounds which is why it has so many great benefits um and it has fiber um so let's see. And then we have, it has calcium. We have copper, potassium, phosphorus, iron, vitamin B1. Um, it can reduce sickness and help with colds and flus. Hence, I guess that's why we're using it for our fire cider. Um, and active uh, commands uh, can help reduce blood pressure. Blood pressure improves cholesterol levels, which lowers the risk of heart disease, as we know. Um, it also contains... Um, different antioxidants that I, you know, didn't even know about, but it can actually help prevent Alzheimer's and dementia, you guys. Um, also getting garlic can help you detox heavy metals in the body, cha-ching, <laughs> which, you know, we all know, you know, fruits and vegetables do that as well. So, um, and it can also improve your bone health. So it's pretty cool, right? Um, so yeah, go ahead and throw that right in. Um, and then, yeah, Cassie, what do you have? Oh, I'm going to add onions. I think I forgot to cut, chop my onions up, but I have them. It could be a red or a white onion. It, so it can be red or white. Um, they both have health properties. Um, hopefully you have it cut up already. If you don't, don't worry, you can cut it up <laughs> now. Um, but you actually want to wait about 10 minutes to allow, it's called Allison's to activate. So what we do is we just cut it into chunks and then you add it, the entire onion. Onions are packed with nutrients. So, you know, there's vitamin C, vitamin B and potassium in all onions. Um, they have a, you know, big impact on heart health uh, because they actually help with your blood sugar and blood pressure, which I didn't know. Um, they're loaded with antioxidants um, and they also have cancer fighting compounds. So it may improve your bone density as well. Um, it has antibacterial properties. And I didn't even realize that um, it can also boost um, your digestive health as well, which is a good thing. And then I think the next ingredient is apple cider vinegar. So do you have information on that, Jess? I do, I do. So, okay, you obviously, you wanna make sure your apple cider vinegar has the mother. That is really important because that is 
that's the good bacteria that we want in our gut. That's going to help it ferment better. And um, it's going to be so much better for you. So I love to use Bragg's. It's my favorite. Um, but you can, like Cassie, I think the one she has in her hand, I have that in my house as well. It also has the mother. Um, yeah, including mother. Good job. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, what you're, let's see. You want to make sure, okay. Um, oh, and you guys, oh my gosh. Google, Google, or go to DuckDuckGo, whatever you use, go Google apple cider vinegar and see what comes up for the health benefits of it, you guys. Oh my gosh. If you go onto Google, you know how you have like the different um, types of searches. If you just go and, you know, click images and just scroll through the images, it's incredible what you'll find. Um, the apple cider vin vinegar, um, it's just amazing. It kills harmful bacteria. Um, let's see. Um, it's, hyper oh oh what's his name oh gosh I wrote it wrong um Hippocrates Hippocrates you know the father of all medicine he used to use vinegar to clean his wounds more than 2,000 years ago you guys how cool is that so who needs hydrogen peroxide right so I thought that was really cool um it can also help lower blood sugar levels and manage diabetes it aids in weight loss improves heart health and us and animals actually. So what we do for our health, a lot of times is really good for our animals as well. Um, I actually give my dogs, um, one fruit, veggie and omega every single day. So, um, let's see. And it's great for blood pressure medication or heart meds, you know, insulin, things like that. Um, that's, you know, it's really great for lowering your blood pressure, your blood sugar. It, it's great for helping lower your cholesterol because, you know, a lot of these, you know, a lot of these things have that we're, that we're talking about today. A lot of these things we keep hearing that come up a lot is, you know, it helps to lower your cholesterol. Um, but you know, I love that I got this from my friend, Mo, who's a nurse, which I wanted to throw this in here. I'm getting this from you, Mo. Um, I want you guys to, you know, to keep an eye on things, you know, as you're doing this, as you're, if you're drinking the fire cider every day, or as, as you're, you know, consistently adding these things, because, um, you're going to start putting these things into your body and it will naturally help those things. So you want to keep an eye if you're on blood pressure medication, if you're on, you know, blood thinner, whatever, um, insulin resistant, whatever kind of medication, just keep an eye on things like that in your body, because, um, it starts to help lower those things naturally. So you might be able to cut back on your medication. You know what I mean? So, you know, keep in touch with your doctor, you know, if things start to lower naturally and things, you know, things like that, like that's a great thing. You want that, but you want to keep in touch with him or her, your doctor to let them know, you know, what you're doing. Cause it's all natural. It doesn't interact with the medication, but it interacts with the effects of the medication, right? Because this, right, the fire cider, that is the medicine, right? That's the natural medicine, right? And natural effects and, you know, the medication, we have natural effects right from, from fire cider. And then you have effects from a pharmaceutical effect. Does that make sense? So just, I would just, you know, pay attention to that. And that's, that's really it. So it's, it's great. Oh, and just pour that right in. Well, you can wait to the end. I honestly wait to the end to pour it in. So um, I put everything in, but you can pour it in first. You know, I have, we only have a couple things left. So actually go ahead. Yeah, pour it in. <laughs> pour it in, you said? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> you put the onion in, right? Yeah, the onion you put in too. Yeah, okay, perfect. Yeah, right. we're ready to pour it then. Yeah, sorry about that. Go for and it. And then the next ingredient I think is turmeric. So I have, um, actually have this turmeric powder. I don't know if you can see that, but you want to add a heaping teaspoon of the turmeric. Um, and you, I mean, you can add more if you like, it has a lot of benefits too. Um, but it's also anti-inflammatory. Um, it can even, um, increase the antioxidant capacity of your body. It has curcumin in it, which is the active ingredient in the turmeric. So you sh it should actually lower the risk for heart disease and can even prevent cancer. Um, it's also good in treating Alzheimer's disease. Arthritis patients um, respond very well to curcumin in some studies, and it actually helps with fighting depression. It can delay and fight aging um, and fight age-related um, chronic disease as well. I love it. And then there's a special note too. I, um, cur cur uh, cur I can't even say it. Curcumin? curcumin. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> curcumin <laughs> is actually poorly absorbed into the, into the bloodstream. So 
just using turmeric alone is isn't really going to be very potent in the body. I'm sure a lot of people realize this, but what happens is when you add black pepper, which is actually, it actually contains pepperine. It's a natural substance. It enhances the absorption of that, of that cur curcumin. <laughs> You can't say it. it. It actually enhances the curcumin by 2000%. You guys, you did not hear me wrong. That's two zero zero zero. Um, what it does is it, it, it helps to slow down that detoxing of the liver to keep the curcumin inside the body longer to help the good effects happen. So you're basically slowing down your detox a little bit. So the good things can help your body. Um, I was so fascinated to learn about that, but, um, you know, you can just add, um, I have my pepper here, um, one to two teaspoons of black pepper. And that's, that's, that's all you need really. Um, and then I'm going to add that. So then we have honey. So you guys, um, fun fact about honey. I don't know if you guys knew this, but, um, once inside the beehive, the bees repeatedly consume and regurgitate the nectar. <laughs> sounds gross right but it's so good for you so i had no idea um it, the, if you have high quality honey um it's very rich in antioxidants um it's less bad for you than sugar for diabetics um it can help lower blood pressure also helps improve cholesterol the ldl uh which is the bad cholesterol um, it can lower triglycerides. It helps with heart disease, insulin resistance, i.e. type two diabetes. And for example, um, I love this, uh, that they, there was a study that was done comparing honey to sugar. And it found that 11 to 19% um, honey lowered it 11 to, 9, 11 to 19% more the, tri the triglyceride levels than the sugar did. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and also you can add things like, so I like spicy things and I think my friend Janet does too. <laughs> um, but I'm adding a jalapeno to mine. So if you wanna add a little uh, spice to it, you can do that. I also have um, cayenne pepper that I'm adding to mine. You can add, um, you can add, uh, what is that thing called? Rosemary. Um, you can do echino echinacea root. Don't ask me where to find it. I've never seen it, but it sounds great. <laughs> you can literally add anything, you guys. Um, you really, you can't mess this up. So, you know, on a side note, you know, this is fermenting and um, they, like I said, you know, you can literally ferment anything. There's all kinds of things out there. You can Google it. You can add and subtract anything from the fire cider. If you, you're just not, you're like, oh, I don't like this. You may, may not like how it tastes, but you can literally add and subtract anything. Um, like I said, you can go to YouTube. You can look up just about anything. There's all kinds of, you know, how to's on different fermenting options. So, um, this is just the typical, you know, fire cider recipe that we use. So, all right, so once you have everything in there, you would pour, you'll, okay, so you're gonna take your apple cider vinegar, vinegar and you just pour it right over everything. We've already done that, I'm sure. If, if you were listening well, <laughs> I wasn't. Um, Are we making sure that it, co it covers the top, okay. Yeah, yeah. I would make sure it covers the top and then you'll also find, um, so you're gonna let it sit for three to four weeks, you guys. And you wanna try to find a, well, if you, if you're, if you think you're going to remember it, put it in a cabinet. So I put it in a dark place because, you know, fermentation likes to have dark, dark areas. Um, so put it in a cabinet. If you think you remember it, if you don't think you'll remember it, keep it on your counter and just put a towel around it like that. And that's, that's kind of what you would do and just keep it on your counter. So, um, where am I? Lose my notes here. Um, okay. So you're going to want to remember um, as well, that's why you don't wanna forget it in your cabinet. You wanna to try to burp it every day or every other day um, because it is fermenting. Um, I mean, I've never, I mean, even if you forget it for like three or four days, I'm sure it's not gonna explode or anything, but basically um, they call it burping. So you just wanna, you wanna open it just loosely a little bit and let it breathe a little and let a little bit of the air, cause it's gonna be like carbonated, be like a, a soda almost, it's a tonic. And then you wanna shake it around every day, if you can, every other day, if you remember, it's not a big deal. Okay, and then, so after three to four weeks, once it's sat here, 
Oh my gosh, it smells so good, by the way, you guys, my mouth salivates over it. Um, but basically you will strain it. I, unfortunately, I didn't do one three or four weeks ago. This is, I'm, um, I'm out. I bought one from the store. And just so you guys know, you can buy these from the store, but they're way more expensive. I think this little bitty bottle, I think it costs us like 20 or 30 bucks. So we're making fire cider from our house, saving so much money. I know Janet knows about this. We're printing money with our tower garden. So um, that's just what it looks like there if you guys wanted to see that. Um, but once it's done, after three to four weeks, you're basically going to strain the solids out and you're going to have your liquid left, right? So once you have your liquid and you can save your solids too, I'm going to tell you what to do with those two. You have options. You don't have to throw them out. We can use everything, right? Um, so you, depending on how sweet you like things, um, you can add two tablespoons to a quarter cup of honey um, just to add some, some flavor, some sweetness to it. Um, and let's see what else. Um, I usually put it right back in the jar. Like I keep mine in my mason jar and I put it right back in there and then I'll just add the honey to it. Um, it does not need to be refrigerated. Like I said, you're going to put it in your, either in your cabinet or on your counter. You're not refrigerating, refrigerating it because if you refrigerate it, obviously you're going to kill the bacteria. It's not going to grow in that environment. Um, and these make really great Christmas gifts as well, you guys, um, to give, you know, immune health, like who wouldn't want that, right? Um, okay, so I, I went over three to four weeks. Let's see. So you have your liquid in your jar, your solids. Um, and like I said, don't throw those away. You can use it for so much. So I've heard people make stir fries with them. Oh my God, they're so good. As from what I've heard, <laughs> I haven't tried it yet. I'm going to have to do that. Um, I have a friend that actually dehydrates her solids in a dehydrator and then she grinds them down in her Vitamix into like a salt. So, and then she uses it for like seasoning with her dishes and apparently she's like addicted to it. Apparently it's amazing. So I kind of want to try that. I have another friend that puts just the whole solids, um, not drying them. She just puts it right into her Vitamix and uses it for like cooking for flavor and things like that. So you can really do anything with it. Um, and let's see. So, and, and yeah, like the tastes of everything in this jar, like if you can imagine like all of the things in here, it's infusing together. So I can imagine it would taste really good to, to eat it afterwards too. Um, so, okay, three or four weeks. And then, oh, so <laughs> this is funny. I have a funny story for you guys too. Um, I, I, my mouth salivates whenever I open the jar, like even if I'm burping it. When I first made this the first time, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I, I would take a sip every day and not, and I didn't wait for three to four weeks. I would just take a sip each day and then replace the apple cider vinegar. And uh, my friend, um, nurse Mo, she would laugh at me, because, but she, you know, you, you want to wait the three to four weeks, but it doesn't, ha you don't have to. I mean, obviously it's better, you know, you're going to get more benefit out of it. But like I said, like, it just goes to show you, you can't mess this up. You really can't. Like I, I, I mess up everything and I didn't mess this up. So, <laughs> and then, you know, when you do taste it, you may, it might be like, there might be a bite there. It's, um, you know, it's a tonic. It's, it might be spicy, mine's spicy, but you know, it's one thing to remember. You want to remember a bite is good. If you, if you have a bite, that means you have a lot of good health properties. So, you know, same, you know, the opposite goes for sugar, sugar feeds bacteria and viruses and things like that. Um, so, you know, the sweeter something is, the more it might contribute to, to chronic health issues. So just keep that in mind. So the more bitter it is, the better it is for you, I'm sure. So, um, and then one other question that I had, um, last time that I thought it would be good to cover, um, you can, someone asked, you know, if they didn't have enough apple cider vinegar to cover the whole thing, if they could just dilute it and add water. And I wouldn't recommend that. I would just go and, you know, get more apple cider vinegar because, you know, you don't want to dilute it. You'll, you won't have the best fermentation process that way. So, um, okay. So just to recap before we finish and answer some questions here, I haven't looked yet. Is anyone else looking on Facebook? <laughs> um, but yes, to recap, you know, everyone we, okay. So we are, we are making fire cider recipe. If you're just tuning in <laughs> uh, or in the Facebook group, um, we have the recording. So if you got, you know, we'll have the recording today. We'll have all the links for you guys to post below um, or just reach out to the person that invited you and we can share these with you. Um, and let's see. 
and you can save them, you know, cause you'll probably want to rewatch this um, in case I, and let me know, you know, if you guys have any questions, if I missed something, um, but you'll probably want to keep making this again and again and again, you'll probably want to have a batch, you know, all winter long and maybe all year long. So, um, but yay, that is our fire cider. Does anybody on zoom have any questions? How are you doing, Janet, Sammy? 